Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Lithium Partners Fall Investor Conference. My name is Ben Shamsian, Vice President. Thank you for joining us here today for our panel titled Innovating Healthcare, Services and Solutions in the Mar Modern Marketplace. We are joined by three executives from three great companies from the industry to get some insights on how they see the space. I've gathered some topics that are of interest to investors and hope to learn greatly from our panelists today. Joining us today are Shane Madden, CEO of Hydrate Technologies, uh, ticker NURS on the Toronto Venture, HYDTF on the OTC, Dr. Lisa Crossley, CEO of Relic Health Technologies, uh, ticker RHT on the Toronto Venture, and RQHTF on the OTC, and Dr. Tipika Volacci, CEO of Syra Health, ticker SYRA on the NASDAQ. Before we begin the discussion, I would like to have each of you introduce yourselves and provide a brief description on your companies. Shane, I will start with you. My pleasure. Thank you, Ben. Um, uh, so nice to be here. And obviously, I love talking about Hydrate and, and, and what we've created. So uh, just a brief background on myself. I'm from Ireland originally, so I'll try to speak nice and slow today. Um, I've been living over here in the U.S. for about 10 years. Uh, we founded Hydrate in 2018. My background is mainly in uh, tech startups, uh, bringing them from proof of concept to market. Uh, we've had multiple exits in that space. Uh, Hydrate in 2018 was one of the more exciting um, initiatives that we've ever started, um, obviously pre-COVID. So it was uh, it was started with a very different vision. COVID kind of expedited a lot of different things in different areas. Uh, but the company in general, the vision was to bring uh, the nationwide first mobile medicine uh, network. So <clears throat> mobile in the sense outside of the archaic uh, reactive bricks and mortar locations that we're used to um, and going fully mobile but still with the same compliance of a bricks and mortar we get referred to as the uber for nurses and that is not really because of the software or because of the mobility it's because we're the first platform that has allowed healthcare professionals to actually work as independent contractors outside of the hospital now with that comes a very large compliance piece and and that's where the structure of hydrate and its company is very very unique and first to market in in, in many areas um in what most people don't understand is in in 30 of the 50 states what's called corporate practice of medicine states it's actually illegal for a, a nurse to work independent as an independent contractor or even uh, involved in the practice of medicine outside of a bricks and mortar so hydrate has broke down those barriers uh, our vision along with being you know a nationwide mobile medical clinic was to kind of close the circle on healthcare, uh, connect patients, providers, uh, physicians in a very different way. Uh, we saw the future of uh, healthcare going in a more pre preventative and individualized way. Um, and again, as COVID has, has expedited many things, brought things to light um, that would have taken maybe a bit longer than that, um, Hydrate is perfectly uh, perfectly positioned and a first, a first to market of its kind platform. Uh, we're in all 50 states. Uh, we right now have about 2,500 nurses across all 50 states, uh, a network of doctors over 100, and we connect the pharmaceutical aspect the mobile aspect with the patient care. So again, uh, trying to connect the, the, the full healthcare circle, be preventative and have healthcare more individualized. So kind of to give you a quick and final overview, uh, whether it's a, a lab test, a genetic test that triggers a telemedicine result that triggers a service provider to go out in the field and provide a, provide a service. Um, Hydrate has kind of that full circle closed um, and uh, a platform built on compliance and built on legality so that we can encompass all 50 states. So that's kind of a high level overview. Um, we started with some very achievable services like IV therapy and obviously have branched into the more, um, you know, service, uh, sorry, patient specific services um, that are maybe a higher level of medicine to kind of complete our overall vision of being a, a mobile medical network. All right, great. Uh, Tapika? Yeah, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, Ben and Lithium Partners, for this opportunity to present as a panel on improving healthcare. Um, a little background about myself. 
Um, I have a medical sciences background and worked in the healthcare sector in the private and public sector uh, for several years before uh, co-founding Saira Health in 2020 alongside my partner Sandeep Alam, who is a serial entrepreneur and a, a subject matter expert in uh, health technology. Um, so Saira Health is uh, innovative solutions providing um, you know, uh, products and services in the healthcare uh, market. And we are publicly trading companies, so which is very exciting. We uh, uh, just got uh, onto the NASDAQ a few weeks ago, so which has uh, uh, pushed our mission and goals and our, our motivation levels towards improving healthcare. So at Saira Health, um, we uh, achieve our mission to improving healthcare by partnering with our um, uh, associates here in the government sector, uh, academia, life science organizations, provider networks, and payers. So we work alongside with our partners in improving patient outcomes, patient satisfaction, and access to healthcare. And how do we do this? We have uh, divided our business services strategically into five main focus areas, behavior and mental health. Uh, we have population health management, digital health, health education, and workforce. So uh, all of these services, they are bank on each other and aligned together to provide this 360 solutions in healthcare with the focus to help our partners achieve their goals of improving access and improving uh, health uh, of their members and patients. And with that, um, our solutions and services, again, are all data-driven, evidence-based solutions. For example, we have uh, population health management, which is led by data scientists and uh, population health specialists, public health specialists. So here is where we provide services such as data analytics, looking at ways to uh, risk stratify members, patients, and provide these insights to our partners to better engage with their, um, with their members. We also look at epidemiology. Now we are looking at data trends from a city, county, state to a national level and helping uh, health organizations shape their policies and strategies to better uh, uh, um, you know, be effective in their offerings. And uh, also we do health equity services or analytics. Now this is analytics with the flavor of uh, other factors that in uh, that help improve health. And these are social determinants of health, societal factors, health equity, and the whole goal is to reduce health disparity. So that is our population health management vertical. And uh, when I talk about behavior and mental health, this is where, you know, we are excited to be in this uh, 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 offering space because the need is more. There's a challenge. Challenges are growing every day. And we have this amazing uh, platform, flagship platform that we call Serenity, which is focused more on the preventative health or uh, preventative side of mental health. So it has assessments, it is engaging, it, 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 it monitors the mental health across a variety of symptoms, engages with the user in a more humanistic manner. It is AI driven, it has engagement through um, uh, AI driven diaries and chatbots. And beyond that, the interventions, digital interventions based on cognitive based therapies. So providing service to a large uh, user base who are hesitant to talk to a physician or a behavioral health therapist, but need help. So here is where Serenity uh, has its place. And also uh, we have a virtual behavioral health therapist also available for anyone who would want to avail that opportunity. So we are very excited about our flagship product, Serenity. And I will touch on digital health, where we provide services uh, such as you know, modernization, cybersecurity, and then there's the product product vertical where we develop products for our partners. Uh, again, based on the need of the partners, we understand and develop, develop these customized solutions. Some of them are already out there in the market. We call Cyrobot. We have an EMR system for small to mid-sized health providers uh, networks, and we have our uh, serenity, which I just mentioned. Health education is also an important piece of uh, putting a total, uh, you know, comprehensive healthcare package together. And here is where we have our medical writers, scientific writers who are uh, bringing this uh, 
who are converting this complex scientific information into in, uh, bite-sized information that is more able to be digestible by patients, payers, physicians, very insightful but regulated and um, uh, in uh, medical knowledge and information. And finally, our workforce where we help ourselves and our partners with the necessary workforce to uh, you know help with the implementation of all of these great initiatives that are uh, that we are bringing to the table. So in a nutshell, we are an innovation company providing services and products for the healthcare sector. And we are very excited as to what our future holds for us. All right, thank you. And Lisa. Yep, I'll keep it short so we can dive into questions. My name's Lisa Crossley. I'm the CEO at Relic Health Technologies. We are a software as a service firm and we're focused on primarily the Medicare and Medicaid patient population. We provide chronic disease management virtual care solutions through our software platform. Um, and we've been able to successfully reduce hospitalizations in our patient population by over 80%. So um, we're going through a period of very rapid growth right now. And um, I'd encourage you to review my presentation if you wanna learn more about the company. All right. Well, thank you, uh, everyone, for that. Let's uh, dive into some topics. Um, uh, healthcare uh, at home, uh, away from traditional doctors' uh, offices and hospitals, is growing rapidly, and COVID uh, did a lot to accelerate this growth, uh, including new technologies. What do you see as the next area of growth, uh, especially from a tech standpoint, and what are you doing to take advantage of this? Uh, and Lisa, I'll begin with you. Okay, hopefully you can't hear my dogs having a fit in the background, uh, the disadvantage of home. Uh, so I think you know it's hard to say where you think the industry will go because a lot of different factors come into play there in predicting the future. And I think you know certainly none of us anticipated the pandemic, or at least certainly not the timing of it. Uh, but I think more and more care is being pushed out of the acute care setting and into the community. It's a lower cost setting for care. And it's also safer. So you're much more likely as a particularly an elderly patient with multiple comorbidities to go into the hospital and catch something there. Uh, then if you're sitting at home surrounded by family and still receiving high quality health care, either through visiting nurses or through you know remote monitoring with uh, devices and platforms. So I, I think the trend is definitely going going to be more and more of this care moving into the community. Got it. Um, Shane, if you can add uh, thoughts. Yeah. There. Yeah, no, uh, great topic, uh, this one. Um, I mean, uh, the healthcare system has been broken for a while. This hasn't. This isn't anything new. Um, COVID obviously um, really shone a spotlight on it um, uh, throughout that pandemic, and then obviously just after. But uh, the, the, this, the overall system has been has been a problem for quite a while. So, getting back to kind of uh, the full circle, uh, closing the healthcare circle that I talked about. Um, you know, technology is going to be utilized um, as we have done since two thousand and eighteen. Uh, patients want not just not just accessible healthcare; they want individualized healthcare as well, um, uh, preventative as opposed to reactive measures that we're used to, where you get sick, you go to the doctor, you go to the hospital. So I see I see the the circle being closed in many ways. So technology like ours, uh, where you know a provider is accessible, um, you know testing is accessible. That is uh, that those results are an, 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 analyzed through an app uh, via a doctor network. A provider can be dispatched um, and essentially report remote patient monitoring is where I see you know it's already being done in spaces but I see that being a, an, an integral part of healthcare moving forward because uh, you have to monitor the, the the you know the processes that have been put in place there so um, kind of uh, utilizing the technology for accessibility of the healthcare whether that's telemedicine or uh, an uber style app to get a provider to your home um, but obviously the the remote patient monitoring part of it after the the fact to kind of uh, bring it all uh, together in a for for a better patient care. So that's where that's where I see tech uh, playing a part in all of this. But uh, yeah, that's I think where we'll all agree that's where healthcare is going for sure. Yeah, and I think the you you hit on the after patient care, and I think uh, Relic uh, is, is Lisa. That's where you guys shine because that's the, the monitoring is is the big piece here. 
That's right. So all of our patients are monitored in the home with cellular enabled medical monitoring devices that are specific to their clinical conditions. And, and that's very, very valuable post discharge for patients who come out of skilled nursing or hospital. But it's also extremely important for patients who have these long term chronic diseases. You know, most of our patients are 70 and older and have minimum of two chronic diseases like diabetes and hypertension, but often have more, you know, kidney disease, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease congestive heart failure and monitoring them and being able to intervene early with a change in medication, you know, diuretic for a CHF patient or for a COPD patient, you know, a steroid or an antibiotic. These are the things that keep these patients healthy and at home and out of that really costly uh, acute care setting. So that is a huge focus for us. You know, at our core, we are a remote patient monitoring company, although we we do a lot more, um, but it is all about you know keeping tabs on these patients when they're at home and out in the community, so that they're not kind of falling off a cliff when they leave an acute care setting. And uh, that is what really drives better health outcomes over the long term. All right, great. Um, organizations, both uh, in the public and private sector, are focusing on utilizing technology to provide better health care for their constituents. But in many cases, that technology is not in-house. Uh, rather, they're working with other companies such as yourselves. Um, can you speak about the opportunities on the horizon for your company in this area? How do you see the competitive landscape, landscape in gaining those organizations as customers? Um, Deepika, I'll uh, begin with you. Yeah, Ben, uh, you're right. Um, you know, there's definitely a need in the market for uh, you know, um, companies that provide the differentiating factor. So I'm here at the health conference in Las Vegas. And what I've seen that is that there are so many companies offering technological solutions that are identical, but with a slight difference in flavor, um, right? So this is leaving the customers also confused as to which is the best company to get engaged with. Again, uh, the companies need this uh, evolving technology and now it is uh, the buzzword is artificial intelligence, AI, and definitely it is gonna help improve the efficiencies for an organizations and they need specialized companies such as Sira Health and again here with our partners on the panel. So uh, how, how do we uh, navigate and make ourselves present and be the optimal partner, right? So uh, I think competition is healthy and um, competition drives innovation. And, uh, you know, the way to really make the difference is trying to be partnering with, uh, you know, potential organizations and really do that deep level uh, gap analysis, work in tandem with your partners, understand the need and help them in fact shape the problem statement and then provide the solution. And again, uh, the emerging technologies such as AI are gonna be uh, you know, uh, gonna be very cost effective, it will be more engaging and um, long-term and meaningful. So I think that is the space that uh, we have a lot of opportunities and, and we ha already have certain products in that space, Serenity, the mental health platform and a population health platform. So um, again, competition is there, but it's healthy and the healthcare pie, um, the market has a huge pie and we all will have a, a place and a piece of it. Lisa, I'd love to hear your thoughts there. Yeah, I, I think the important thing to remember with healthcare is it is definitely not one size fits all. So you know, there are companies out there that are focused on employer sponsored health plans and working with that working age patient population and providing a lot of kind of high touch coaching for patients with diabetes or high blood pressure. And we are focused very laser focused on the Medicare and Medicaid population on that elderly patient who's, you know, 75 or older and multiple comorbidities. And a lot of the times are found in remote and rural communities. And so I think, you know, it's really a question of uh, different companies kind of finding their niche in this space. It's it's a huge market. Deloitte says that virtual care, preventative care uh, in the U.S. and um, using technology solutions will be a hundred billion dollar market by 2025. And there are others who would argue it's even bigger. So, you know, it's a very big pie for people to take a slice of, but I think what I see a lot in the competitive landscape right now is that um, solutions are very much aimed at certain market segments. You know, we happen to have our market segment largely to ourselves. We don't end up with other companies bidding against us when we're signing large contracts. Um, and I think that's 
a really good way to, as, as Shane was saying, um, provide individualized medicine. So having companies that are developing solutions for very specific, even though they're very large, but very specific patient populations allows them to really meet the needs of those patients in the home and, and provide technology in a way that works for that particular patient base. Okay, great. Uh, Deepika mentioned uh, artificial intelligence or AI. Um, how do you see the effect of AI on each of your individual businesses? And uh, I'd like to uh, begin with Shane. Yeah, um, yeah. As Elisa said earlier, uh, AI is kind of the buzzword. Uh, sorry, Deepika said it. AI is kind of the buzzword. Um, telemedicine became the buzzword during COVID. Nobody knew it was around for twenty five years, but it had been used. It had been used differently. So. Yeah, it, it goes back to what are you trying to achieve, right? Um, I mean, it's it's really how are you going to utilize it within your specific business model or your ecosystem? Um, where I see it is essentially connecting the patient disease and treatment um, through analytics. So whether that's behavioral data, whether that is certain parameters that you have provided within your technology that you're that you're you're laser focused on on collecting um, those types of those types of um, uh, data sets are very, very popular and, and very, very uh, can be utilized in many ways. And AI can can definitely help that. Uh, it's not a one um, it's not a one fit for every technology. I think it needs to be used appropriate to your to your business model and your ecosystem. But definitely, there's upsides to connecting the patient disease and the treatment side of things uh, in a very unique way. All right, uh, Deepika. Yeah, I agree. Uh, you know, just because uh, everybody's talking about AI, we cannot shape our strategy around AI, but, you know, be smart in if it is applicable to the solutions and services we are providing. And definitely AI has its benefits. You know, it, the traditional models had limitations uh, in more of those humanistic features like facial recognition or voice, rec uh, voice recognition or modulation or sentiment analysis. Now, AI is here and helping us, you know, uh, look at those aspects in our services and products. So machine learning and natural uh, language processing are, are changing the way we connect with people and then creating these models based, are based on first gathering the correct data and then feeding an algorithm which can analyze this data and then more importantly creating this uh, AI model and validating it now. Is it really giving the answers that are pertinent and uh, uh, are meaningful? And then finally deploying these solutions. So there are a lot of factors that go along uh, creating this AI models that make sense in healthcare. So, uh, you know, keeping all of that in mind, uh, just not em embrace uh, AI because everybody is, but more essentially how it makes a difference. I think that that should be the mentality for the companies. Okay, great. Um, I want to turn to the question of uh, customer acquisition, and, and this is specifically for Deepika and Lisa. Both your companies provide great products and services. Um, what are the biggest challenges you face as you go about winning customers? Um, Lisa, I'll begin with you. Yeah, I mean, we, I think our biggest challenges were when we started out in, in 2017, 2018, working with patients and clients. And we were, you know, an unknown, untested quantity and, and a Canadian company at that. So trying to penetrate the U.S. market. And, and so, you know, healthcare being very conservative inherently and, and customers not really wanting to try something new. And if someone else isn't using it, you know, that was a real barrier for us. We were very much missionaries for the first couple of years. After <clears throat> we'd been operating for several years and we had a lot of clinical data demonstrating the efficacy of the platform and a lot of reimbursement data showing that our clients, when they bill Medicare and Medicaid, they do get reimbursed. So there is that revenue stream for them. At that point, we were able to start attracting more and more clients, uh, particularly at the larger scale, so multi-state networks or nationwide healthcare organizations as clients. Um, and that's largely been by referral and, and word of mouth. And I, I find that's very typical in healthcare. You know, you kind of have to start out as a missionary, really do the work, establish your particular solution or solutions as the gold standard for care in that particular area and that sort of niche market segment. Um, and we've done that very well with the chronic disease patients. There's 57 million Medicare and Medicaid patients who would be an appropriate target for our solutions and who have multiple chronic diseases. Um, and we are steadily accelerating our traction with the large customers, primarily through word of mouth. So I think the really difficult part about customer acquisition is getting started and establishing a strong reputation in the space. 
based on data. Pika? Yeah, I agree with uh, Lisa. As a, um, a newer company, there's always challenges, uh, you know, finding your space and niche when you're competing with um, larger organizations which have their presence in the healthcare for a long time. For example, when we are looking at uh, electronic health record market, there are huge uh, companies out there, uh, you know, which are targeting enterprise level organizations. But then, you know, always it is important to identify your target customers, right? So we have, for uh, in that example, Saira Health is looking at small to mid-sized health organizations who are maybe unable to afford these enterprise level EHR systems, but definitely require a system that is, that is cost effective uh, customizable and individualized to their needs. So again, you know, finding that uh, gap in in the cu customer base and working alongside the partners and providing these customized solutions is the only way to um, tap into un uh, mark into segments that are being uh, siloed or ignored. Um, and then you know the disadvantage could be that these are long these are going to be long sales cycles for us to do that analysis gap analysis understanding. But then I think in the long term you know it would pay off with long term partnerships and collaborations with those customers. Okay, great. Uh, next question is uh, for all three of you. Um, the capital markets continue to be challenging and uh, growth capital is more precious than ever. Uh, where are the areas in your business uh, that you would love to invest uh, further into? Um, Lisa, I'll begin with you. Yeah, well, as Ben knows, we just closed on a $6 million raise last week. And we raised that. By the way. Thank you. In this um, market, it's tough. Yes, yes. Uh, we raised those funds because we have recently signed one of our newer contracts it's in 300, 300 locations across the state. So we're now uh, in 18 states, including the U.S. Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico, as well as in Mexico. So, you know, we were spread pretty thin on the ground. And I think, you know, you really want to make sure as a company that when you have these large high value clients, you are meeting their expectations every step of the way. So we decided to do a raise very quickly, pull something together so that we could staff up very aggressively and uh, be able to service that client and all of their sites, you know, in, in multiple states around uh, across the nation. So, you know, I think, um, for us, raising was really about expansion. So we didn't need to raise to kind of cover our current operating costs. But when we were presented with opportunities to really grow and serve some new large clients, that was where it made a lot of sense to put some cash into the business right away rather than waiting until we're cash flow positive in a couple of months and then waiting till we built up, you know, sufficient cash to really Kind of go on a hiring spree, if you will, um, and I think that's going to pay real dividends to investors. You know, even as early as next year, it'll significantly impact our top line revenue by being able to service the lar larger clients um, immediately and and rapidly onboard their patients. Got it. Shane, love to hear from you. Yeah, fantastic, uh, and congratulations, Lisa. That's awesome. Um, yeah, so we were in a similar uh, space. Hydrate, obviously, due to its unique offering. Um, we uh, our, our growth was exponential here for for you know for many years so uh, one of the main reasons to go public was basically m a and to expedite um you know the expansion of an already growing company so um to that point we have many verticals that we would like to explore possible m a's on um, i mean we are a medical company at the end of the day um uh, which utilizes our proprietary software to do business that's how i would describe us and um, so between pharmaceutical uh, revenue between um you know service revenue medical service revenue um, and obviously our, our our sas you know our SaaS model and um, we have basically various revenue streams that we can utilize um possibly taking advantage of an m a opportunity which we're already looking at we also look into the the, the actual customer side of it um you know nurse recruitment companies we've talked to a few of those and um, to kind of expedite the amount of uh exposure we have to the nurses on a larger scale um, as well as opportunities on the on the patient side so we have many opportunities and that was our our, our basic main reason for going the company was very strong on a, on a great trajectory has continued so actually more so um, and yeah so that was the main reason we, were, we went public was for for these m a opportunities okay great uh Deepika? Yeah, uh, our goal is to make our company uh, enterprise level uh, healthcare 
company providing uh, solutions and services. And for this, we are going to continually invest in growth and innovation. We are going to invest in understanding the market trends, doing some research analysis. So continual um, uh, you know, uh, a, st uh, a strategy on what is those unmet needs in the healthcare sector. And then we would like to invest in product development, you know, to meet those needs and eventually outreach and increase our visibility in the market so that we can help more multiple organizations with our services. Okay, great. Um, we're coming up to uh, towards the end here. Uh, one last question. Um, can each of you tell me something uh, that either your customer base or your investor base may not fully appreciate about I either your company or your offerings? Um, and Lisa, I'll begin with you. Sure. Um, <clears throat> I'll just say in some ways this hark back to my earlier comment, but um, you know, from the moment we started building this company in 2016, when we didn't even really have a platform, built that out, uh, to now, our vision has always been to, you know, start out with those small individual physician practices and home health agencies, health agencies. but uh, really deliver a high value product that had a lot of clinical efficacy and work, worked really well and very easily for our clinicians so that we could grow into a business that was able to attract as we have some of these large clients who are subsidiaries of Fortune 500 companies. And uh, we now have clients, you know, real blue chip clients who are some of the top healthcare organizations in the United States. And I think uh, sometimes it may get a little bit lost that that was the plan all along. And there's a lot of effort that goes into that early missionary work, but we're at a point now where that's really paying off. And so I think the future is very exciting from here. Okay, uh, Deepika? Yeah, at um, Cider Health, you know, we are a fast paced company and we want to embrace change and innovation to better serve our partners. Um, and both our customer base and investor base are very important to us, especially since we are a publicly trading company. And we would appreciate their alignment with our growth and innovation momentum, understanding the breadth of our services that will shape us to become that enterprise level uh, company. And, uh, you know, they, they, we will be shaping and improving our services. And that is something uh, we would appreciate our uh, investor base to um, look at. And, uh, you know, we are very super excited about what the future holds. Okay. And uh, Shane, if you can round us out, please. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so from our company standpoint, I mean, becoming a nationwide mobile medical clinic is a pretty big statement, right? So we, we went at this from a compliance standpoint. A legal standpoint, a structural standpoint, and we went from there up. Um, so one of the things I'd like everyone to understand is that this is a necessity platform for our nurses. It's not one of the options and they can do it another way. If anybody is truly interested in um, working as an independent contractor in the healthcare industry, our platform is the platform um, there is no competitor at the moment um, we were the first to market with this initiative and i think that's mainly, mainly why we get called the uber for nurses so compliance first legality first and then we built up from there obviously um, piggybacking on all of the things that we have just discussed with the technology the need for a change in the healthcare system as a whole um, individualized preventative medicine and all of the things that are needed there um, and finally, we solved, essentially, we did that by solving all of the barriers to entry that a nurse would normally have, whether that's medical direction, access to pharmacy, access to customers, access to tech, uh, malpractice insurance, uh, PC network, corporate practice of medicine, all of these things that uh, would have been quite literally impossible to do, um, you know, and, and obviously wouldn't have a platform behind you, uh, even if you achieve those things at a tremendous cost. So that's what we did, um, but it's, it's essentially an, an, a, a platform that's necessary if anybody is is serious about uh, you know acting as an independent contractor so just wanted to put that point across all right well thank you fortunately we are out of time here um uh, i want to thank all our first panelists as well as everyone listening if any investors would like to get in touch with any of our panel companies please reach out to myself or any members of the lithium partners team and with that thank you and have a good day everyone thanks take care thank ben. you